Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here at Halid RV with the totally facelifted and personally I think way better looking 184 J Flight SLX here. Uh, this comes in about 3,500 pounds exactly on the nose as we see it here today, which uh, if I recall correctly on this one uh, means it has a thousand pounds of cargo capacity on the nose, which means it has a total maximum weight of 4,500 pounds on the nose which means that it's going to be a very good pairing for a lot of potential tow package SUVs. Now, obviously, you know, SUV towing is just, it's like a lawless wasteland. There are some that are uh, far more capable than others. So every, every, you know, tow vehicle needs to be examined individually. But I would love to hear what you think about uh, like the new exterior, especially the new interior farmhouse finally making their way to these little guys and i think that this is probably the product or at least the size of camper jaco should have been doing farmhouse my opinion a long time ago because it brightens and lightens it up it makes it look and feel larger in there the slide out really helps this one look and feel a lot bigger too now quick note for you i had previously reported uh in another slx video they had two decors in these little guys that that is unfortunately incorrect that's true when you get up into the eight foot wide slx's these single axle guys this is how they look on the inside so kind of like the old you know ford any color you like as long as it's black i hope you like it and if not we only have Catalinas and Wildwoods and Cherokees and other little things here and they all make a floor plan kind of like this and they're all cool in little different ways and that's what I want to go through this one really show you where it sticks out and really this floor plan is pretty simple it's basically just the 174 no slide bunkhouse with a nice deep dinette slide it's going to give us that extra sense of space during the day it'll also give us um, the ability to really seat four people more comfortably around the dinette since they had more space to be able to dedicate to it. Now, I'm sitting in the dinette in the slide right now. One of the things I like about it is with the update that they've recently put in with a full viewing window in the entry door, I can actually see out the door side of this RV a lot of times. Um, you know, kitchens really get very bossy and obtrusive on RVs. And a lot of RVs will put a little kitchen window there, which frankly wouldn't offend me on this camper. I would like that, but it is important to note, uh, to the left of that sink, that's actually where the TV hookups are located. And with this being a stick and tin trailer, you have the ability to put wall mounts pretty much anywhere you like. By not putting the TV up there above that window, they were, well, the TV hookups anyway, they were able to give us a bigger bedroom window for more campsite viewing and better visibility and airflow. Well, viewing and visibility. That would be the same thing now, wouldn't it? <laughs> Forrest Gump is not the only one who is not a smart man. But up front here, this, I think, is going to be a make or break game changer feature for people. In little campers like this, you almost always get some kind of reduced size queen. You'll get, it's only 54 inches wide, it's only 74 inches long, something like that. Jayco built this with a full 60 by 80 true queen bed down here. That is unbelievably uncommon in little single axle campers like this. Even the J Feather Micros, which are way more money, don't have that. I think that's an absolutely awesome feature. Another potential game changer here is that you have the option of going to the larger roof uh, 13,500 BTU air conditioner. Normally what you would get on this camper is where this little cargo net storage space would be. That's always pre-framed up for an 8,000 BTU side mount air. A lot of people are going to say that's going to be enough for this small of a space. Some people will say that this is too much air power for a, uh, a little camper like this. But if you talk to anybody, say down south or in the west where they get 6,000% humidity, they're gonna say, uh, Yankee boy, you don't know what you're talking about. You need that bigger air. And, and I get that. I've spent some time south of the Mason-Dixon line. That humidity is no joke. You can drink the air with a straw. Uh, <laughs> that's not really far from true. So this one has been built with the full roof air system that we're looking at right now. Um, you, something that I'll mention a couple times through the video is this is just one sample of how these could be built. This is not necessarily an exact guarantee of how every single 184 BS J flight at Halo RV is going to be built. So kind of keep that in mind. This is just an idea. The ones that we have, we're probably going to order them several different ways throughout the season. Now the floor is carpetless and ventless, which is great. <sighs> I really would like it if it was carpetless over here in the slide. Logically to me, 
The one place I don't want carpet is in that slide. And typically speaking, with a step up slide out like that, uh, going carpetless is easier. So hopefully that is something we can adopt or see adopted rather in future seasons. Now, um, if we take a second, close that shade up there, you see nice uh, kind of blackout sort of shades. That table can fold down to give you an extra sleeper and a nice little bonus drawer below the slide right there, which is a very interesting thing. Let no space go to waste. That right there, I mean, that's, that's very handy. Not to mention, there is storage below the benches. Plus, with the table bracketing against the wall, not a free-floating table, you don't have to worry about the table accidentally shifting and falling down to the floor over here. Uh, that's, uh, you know, a, a good way to spill the red Kool-Aid all over. Like, ooh, hold on. I meant to talk about this earlier. Uh, handy little pro tip over here for you from your Uncle Josh. It is very, very cool that you have a full privacy curtain over here for the front bed space. Like, I, I love that. But you have to be a little bit careful with it. My recommendation is whenever you're not using it, especially if you're traveling, add this to your pre-trip checklist. Get it flipped on the bed so that it doesn't accidentally get sucked in and caught behind that slide out. That curtain gets in your slide gears and you are going to be spitting nails, uh, hornet angry. Wow. Hang on. The uh, I'm just kind of noticing here. I'm sitting on the bed right now. I don't know if they've changed their mattress supplier, if this is a substitute mattress or what it is. This isn't something I think I can really display on video well. This bed doesn't suck. <laughs> I think it's the best way I can put it. If this is a substituted mattress, hey, Jayco, if you're listening, um, keep it up, please. This is not bad, you know? Now, that being said, I think any RV, uh, for the most part, especially in this class, you're still probably going to get, like, at least a phone deck, but, like, this isn't bad. This, this isn't like wrecking my lower back just by sitting on it. But that actually is kind of par for the course with Jayco. Like, if you look at this, when you get in one, there's a lot of, I call it, hand feel qualities on Jayco's. Like, squeeze the foam here. Take a look at this. This is double thick from what you normally find. Lift these up. You see plywood. You see better grade materials. You know, that's that's normal Jayco doing Jayco things. That's part of the reason they have that absolutely unrivaled 2 plus 3 year warranty. Now, speaking of which, that construction also uh, demonstrates itself in the bunk load ratings. 300 pounds per bunk space, which is fantastic. Um, now, one thing I want to point out. A lot of RVs in the little campers like this that have uh, a set of rear bunks back here, they'll have like a cargo door and that lower bed flips up. This one does not do that. Instead, we're just getting kind of the, the extra window coverage. Part of the reason is, and you'll see it better when we go outside, things like the water heater are squirreled away under that uh, mattress right there, which is the reason, again, when we step outside, you will see that this RV has a full front pass-through under the bed, as opposed to just, well, you can climb in through the access panel and dig your way to the cargo. The RV also standard has roof solar prep, which is kind of cool. You'll see the plug right above us when we step outside. And, um, or I could probably just splice the footage in now like I usually do, but that's where the charge controller would be located. Now, uh, trying to slowly spin you around here, give you a look at the kitchen. And uh, again, the farmhouse decor, which is now standard. I hope you like it. If not, I respect it. I know it's not for everybody. Some people don't like the little distressing. They think that it makes the accents look, say, like a little dirty. I like the look of it personally. Giving you a look around all the storage here. One other thing I want to mention is kind of like that roof air conditioner. Um, we are looking at the standard six cubic foot gas electric fridge because one of the other major updates that just came into this product line just before this filming is that they used to have a, a little fridge below the kitchen countertop, like kind of to the left under the sink is where the fridge used to be located. Now we're getting a, a, a full-size refrigerator. It does mean that we lost a pantry. Viewers have advised, hey, Josh, you know, that's true, but I could always just put my empty bo or my dry boxes of mac and cheese in there or whatever, you know, your hamburger helper. I don't know what you eat. You get the idea. You also do have the option of putting in an 8.7 cubic foot 12 volt DC compressor fridge. Now, I think, th so this RV, uh, if you know us at Halet RV, you know that I'm a huge, huge fan of the 12 volt fridges personally. Um, this RV was ordered before those changes were implemented. So this one just kind of slipped through. I think for general inventory in the future, I would probably have these in stock with no roof air because there's just going to be a nice skylight vent there. 
um, and the side mount air standard, and I'd probably build them with the 12 volt fridge. But what's kind of cool here, you can see that, you know, if you want to build this for better off-grid capacity with the two-way gas electric fridge, that's standard. You can add some solar to it. Or you can go super park, uh, you know, juice eaten and go with the bigger uh, air conditioner, the 12-volt fridge, which is very power efficient, but it's still not nearly as efficient as the uh, gas electric fridge. So you have some choices. I don't know if I've explained them clearly. I think I may have just confused everything. And uh, instead of dwelling on that more, I'm just going to demonstrate the fact that it is really nice that all of your main cabin lights in here are just on one switch. I mean, there's plenty of them, but you can still control them individually. Now, the bathroom is basic, and I don't mean like, girl, you basic. I, I just mean, you know, it's a, it's a simple, straightforward bathroom, but it is at least a dry bath. Um, there's enough legroom in here for somebody like me. Actually, one of the things I kind of liked, the little slot on the door... If you're taller like me, you want that extra couple inches of space. So you can actually just sneak your toes right under it. Um, that way the kids can poke your toes while you're, you know, doing your business. Uh, the tub right here, uh, it helps keep the shower curtain uh, inside here. And I and I know a lot of people uh, would, are, are immediately going, why is there no shower surround paneling? I get that. Um, skylight above is nice. It lets somebody like me stand in there. The, the lack of shower surround is one of those things. They've spent plenty of money in other places. They're trying to keep price competitive. The idea here, and it is, it's valid. You can, when you're done showering, take your towel and wipe the walls down and then open the vent and let it air out in here. Now, I, I get that that's not, not everybody likes that solution. Could you theoretically add a shower surround panel aftermarket? Yes. Uh, do we have other RVs in this class that already have shower surround paneling and similar floor plans? Yes. But this one has things like that true queen bed. Every camper has that one thing that really makes it special. That's what I mean all the time when I say every RV is the best for a different reason. And what's really nice about this one, even with the slide fully retracted, you maintain the ability to easily walk through the trailer. You can get to all of the storage, the refrigerator, the bathroom, the bunks, if you need to make a travel stop, uh, I think she uh, absolutely passes the Cracker Barrel test, and she's totally turtle-friendly, dude. So I talked a little bit about towing when we first started here. Again, with a maximum weight of 4,500 pounds, an appropriate tow package SUV could handle this. A mid-size tow package pickup, Colorado, Canyon, uh, Tacoma, Ranger, something like that. Oh, man, what a perfect fit for a vehicle like that. Now, if you have a 4,500-pound tow capacity... I don't recommend this trailer, even though it has a maximum weight of 4,500 pounds. Personally, I think that that is just pushing things too much. Now, legally speaking, you are 100% in the black and you are what has been deemed safe. But I think safety and comfort don't always line up. And I want you both safe and comfortable. Now, you know, you're red-blooded Americans, or I, I suppose, you know, we have a lot of Canadians, folks from other countries actually watching our channel now. I've seen, uh, it's interesting, I can actually look to see what countries people are watching our channel from, and the map has really been changing lately, but you get the idea. You, you're free to make your own choices. That's my personal suggestion. That doesn't mean my word is infallible. What I do like, though, is it's that seven foot easy toe and narrow body. It's easy to see around. It's not long. It's not overly tall. Although, again, the roof air does add a little bit of height to it. And it does seem the beatings will continue until morale improves. In other news, I am getting word from the field that our senior field analyst, Josh the RV Nerd, has an interesting take on the apparent lack of reported stable steps on the new Jayco arrival. Josh? That's right, Josh. We are live here in the field reporting on the apparent lack of factory installed stable steps on this RV. Sources close to Jayco have indicated their reasoning for this is stable steps at times can be difficult to deploy on uneven campsites, or in the case of a storage facility, you may not be able to fold the steps out to access the RV, which can prove problematic. There are additional reports of some clients indicating dirt can be flipped into the RV in the case of the stable steps. However, the good news is chances are you can always install a set of stable steps aftermarket should you be so inclined. Live from the field, Halo RV, Josh the RV Nerd, Halo RV News. Thanks, Josh. As always, hard hitting stuff. I'm Josh the RV Nerd, on behalf of Josh the RV Nerd, reporting for Halo RV News. You saw how that baggage door has the magna hold back for easy access, which is nice. The windows are heavily tinted to keep the sunshine out. 
And I don't know of anybody else in this class doing that two plus three year warranty. I, I do think that they have the absolute best in class warranty there. Similarly, I'm not aware of anybody else at this class or price point doing things like Goodyear tires, not just rear, but also side camera prep in this classification of RV. Um, and turn signal safety lighting and reverse lighting. You see those extra double, uh, doubled up uh, clearance lights at the top there? <laughs> uh, double up, uh, uh. <laughs> um, When you flip on, let's say your left-hand turn signal, those extra lights at the top, your tail light, and all of the lights down the side of the RV will blink along with your turn signal for safety. Plus, you have reverse lighting. Now, uh, Jayco seems to be one of the only brands of RVs I've seen where a spare tire is standard. We have to option that onto like almost everything else in, the, in a stick and tin category that we carry here at Haywood RV. And this is subtle. I love this though. It's, it's less obvious with the window in the way, but there is just a classic callback to that Jayco blue in the decals there. Also on that J flight, it has that same kind of deep, rich blue outline on it. The water heater right there, that is gas and electric and auto ignition and fast recharge, which means uh, you can run gas and electric simultaneously and get just shy of 18 gallons of hot water per hour. That is pretty cool. The only window on this that does not open for airflow that I can think of is just that upper bunk window. I would, I'd sure love it if it opened for air, but considering that's normal in this class, I guess that's not really a knock against it. It's just a preference item. Oh, one more thing. Look at the, the, the ground up by that tongue jack. Jayco actually includes that re, uh, removable wheel right there. Because uh, like if you're on nice flat paved ground, like a garage or a barn, if you have it fully finished or something like that, you can hand push these things in place. They're actually not that hard to move. A little trickier on the dirt here where we're at. And obviously you don't want to be pushing one uphill, but if you need to hand park it, you have a uh, like a homeowner's association, but you have a big enough garage where you can't keep the camper parked outside, but you can shove it inside there. That's one of the nice things about these little guys. Oh, and speaking of shoving it, um, I was asking my wife where I could stick a trailer like this, and you know what she told me? So again, I really love some feedback, what you think about the new updates. Uh, also that air conditioner, we've optioned again that larger air conditioner on this one. We don't normally do that here as a Midwestern dealer, but with the slide out, and we do have a lot of customers nationwide who have requested the bigger air, I thought I'd try a couple, just see how it goes. Would you prefer the two-way fridge like you see here, or would you prefer a 12-volt fridge? And if you don't like the interior, are, are you familiar with the other things I mentioned, like Wildwood, Cherokee, uh, uh, oh, I'm blanking now, Catalina? You know, would you rather do one of those instead of something like this? I'll leave you some links if you ask for them. I'll try to remember to put them in the video description. No promises, sometimes I forget. And as always, thank you. Thank you for joining us here, guys. We're family owned and operated. We don't do hidden dealer fees. I just have a really cool job where I get to walk around and say silly things about campers all day. <laughs> I'm a, uh, I, I really appreciate all the support that you offer us here. If you haven't done so, hit the like button on the video, subscribe and follow along. And until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halo Camping, everyone.